G'day, my name is Kev. My channel's all about building and maintaining ponds on a budget. If that sounds like something that interests you, please like and subscribe. One of the most common questions that I get are what size pump do I need for a certain type of pond or to run a certain type of filter? Most of the people that watch this channel are legends, so they build their own ponds and filters. And I think I might have confused a few people when I talk about the amount of flow in regard to bog filters, because I measure the amount of flow through the filter in time. So in this video, I just want to talk about what size pump to buy if you're building either a bog filter or even a waterfall filter like the one I built a few weeks ago. For anyone that's buying commercial equipment, just simply follow the recommendations from the manufacturer. This is my Aquascape pond and it came as a kit. All the components are appropriately sized for the size of the pond and the filters used. Of course, if you're looking to add additional DIY filters to an existing pond, hopefully this video is gonna help. So for those like me that wanna save money and build the filters themselves, we need to educate ourselves so that we can size the pumps correctly. In this video, I'm only gonna talk about bog filters and waterfall filters or you know high flow filters because these are what I like to build and use in my ponds. There's loads of different ways to filter a pond. These are just my favourites and these work for me every time. So let's start with my favourite and that's the bog filter. Bog filters are my favourite for a number of reasons. They always provide me with crystal clear water year round. They require very little maintenance and they're very efficient to run. Which is great for those of us that like to save money because we can use less flow to power them. Because when it comes to pond pumps, less flow means less watts and less watts means less electricity. So it's important to mention that a bog filter should be at least 10% of the pond's volume. This pond is a thousand litres, so I have a bog filter that is a hundred litres. If you want to have big fish or you want to keep lots of fish in a small pond, then you'll need to supersize the bog in relation to the pond. So when it comes to sizing the pump for the pond, it's easiest to use the pond volume to size the pump. There's a common rule that gets thrown around that a fish pond should be circulated at least once every hour. I found that with bog filters and sensible fish numbers, we can circulate the pond less than that and still achieve great water quality. But for the average pond owner, aiming to circulate the water at least once every hour is a good place to be. But when it comes to how much water should be moving through the bog itself, the aim is to move it through nice and slow. If it takes the water up to 15 minutes to pass through the bog, I'm okay with that. Even if it takes as little as five minutes, I'm okay with that too. And that's another thing I love about bog filters. They have so much wiggle room. The slow flow of water allows bacterias and plants to work their magic, making the pond safe for the fish and crystal clear. So let's say if we were looking at adding a bog filter to an existing pond, we could buy a small efficient pump specifically for the bog. To calculate the volume of water running through the bog, if you want a 15 minute retention time, you times the bog size by four because there are four lots of 15 minutes in an hour. So in this pond with a 100 litre bog filter, I would select a pump that delivers around 400 litres per hour. If I want to turn the water over more frequently, say I want the water moving through the bog every 10 minutes, I multiply the bog volume by six because this time there are six lots of 10 minutes in an hour. So now it's a 600 litre an hour pump that I want to buy. I hope that's not too confusing and makes sense. Remember, this is just the flow going through the bog. If I want to have large fish or lots of fish, then I increase the filter to 25% of the pond volume. Now I'm looking at a bog size of 250 litres. This time I need a thousand litre pump for a 15 minute retention time or 1500 litres for a 10 minute retention time. I personally find that keeping the circulation through the bog nice and slow gives the best results. 
Even if building a large pond with a bog filter or a small one, I still like to aim for these long retention times. Now in saying all that, if you're just getting one pump for the entire pond and a bog filter is the primary filter, I still think you should be looking at buying the pump based on the volume of the pond. So for a thousand litre pond, you would still buy a thousand litre an hour pump. You can divert the excess flow over the top of the bog or into circulation jets using a T-piece fitting and a couple of valves. I've got videos showing how I've set up the T-piece fitting in the bog and another video showing how I've installed pond jets. They're both part of the Dream Pond build if you want to check them out. I'm a big fan of adjustable pond pumps because you can really dial in the optimal flow once the bog is full of rock and gravel. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check them out. So in this situation, even though only a percentage of the flow is going through the filter, it still works a charm. The extra flow that doesn't pass through the actual bog is also having a positive impact. There's beneficial bacteria everywhere in the pond, so keeping the water moving brings more water into contact with them. Moving water is also a great way to oxygenate the pond. Streams are also fantastic filters, but I'll talk about that in another video. Now let's move on to a high flow filter or a waterfall filter, like the one here on the Aquascape Pond. It still uses bacteria to keep the water safe and crystal clear. You can easily make these types of filters yourself if you want to save some coin. I've recently done a video on how I built one, but YouTube is full of all different types of these sorts of filters that are built using the same principle that make this one so successful. So these filters are still, like I said, reliant on beneficial bacterias, uh, but they also work best when used in conjunction with a skimmer, as that pulls the highly oxygenated surface water from the pond and forces it through the filter. The filters themselves are filled with media like bio balls, but it can really be anything that is lightweight and has lots of surface area for the bacteria to cling onto. The filters will also have sponges that will help capture small suspended particles and stop them from going into the pond. Now unlike the bog filters, these filters work best with high turnover rates. In this pond, the water is being circulated four times per hour. You can still get away with only circulating the pond once an hour on larger ponds, but I find the more circulation through this type of filter, the better. That's what makes them perfect as a waterfall or a stream filter, because to build a decent waterfall, you need a good amount of flow. For me, I always say you want around 4,000 litres per 30 centimetre width of water. That will give you a nice sheet of water uh, coming over the rocks or forming a waterfall. If this was my only source of filtration, I'd aim for a minimum turnover at least twice per hour of the pond. Although I know the large aquascape pond kits are only circulating once per hour, but I think as the fish get bigger or they breed, uh, the water quality and clarity might start to decline and you might find that you probably need to add a bog filter later on. And so in saying that, you don't need to stick to just one type of filter. There's lots to choose from. Um, bogs and waterfall filters are just some of my favorite. Uh, I'm incorporating both into my dream pond that I'm currently building. In the future, I also want to experiment with an anoxic filter as I've never tried them before. And they sound awesome from a maintenance and cost point of view. So I definitely want to give them a go. And that's one of the things about filters. There are so many variables. If you want to enjoy a low maintenance pond, both of the filters I've talked about are great. So long as you don't overstock the pond. And that's really key. If there's too many fish or you're feeding too much, it doesn't matter how good the filter is or what flow rates you have, the water quality and clarity will decline. You either need more filtration or less fish or stop feeding them so much. It really is that simple. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.